Howdy, cruisers. I'm sure you've all been following the news about the situation in Baltimore. Yesterday morning, the container ship Dolly struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore Harbor, leading to a catastrophic collapse. The situation is now a recovery, so let us all keep that in mind. I've been watching a lot of videos on this, and because I want you to be the most informed crew on the Lido, I'm going to share with you two videos that I think are the only two videos you need to watch to understand what most likely probably happened here. In this case, I'm not going to say it's a conspiracy or an attack or anything like that because very often, well, the most simple explanations are often the case. So we're going to start with this one. It's from the channel, What is Going On with Shipping? And what he does is... He puts side by side the AIS track of Dolly and the video of the incident and gives a minute by minute rundown of her course, changing course, some of the incidents that happened aboard the ship, the power fluctuations, and then finally possibly some attempts to stop the vessel with either the anchor or the engine, and then finally the elision into the bridge leading to the collapse. That is the most concise um, version of this story that I have seen, and it covers it in very good detail with an overlay of a chart of the harbor, as well as the video you've probably already seen. So go check that out. After watching that, you might be wondering, well, why did the ship turn toward the bridge? There's been a lot of speculation on this. Well, that's when you need to go watch this video from the Casual Navigation Channel where he explains how the pressure wave at the bow will naturally cause that to happen at the merging of the two channels, which you can see on the AIS track from the previous video. That's it. And it looks like we have just another Titanic type scenario. The one of how many thousands of ship movements that have transited Baltimore Harbor in the last, what, 50 years since that bridge was constructed? Eventually, after probably two years, the alphabet soup of agencies will issue their report and we will know down to the minute the exact timeline of events. We will know exactly what component fail. We will know who is or was responsible for that component. And we will know what was happening on and off the bridge during this incident. As to why what will likely be determined as a minor malfunction aboard the ship turned into such a catastrophe, that I think we'll find out a lot sooner than many, many other things. And the answer will be dolphins. Not the flipper kind, dolphins, the structures designed to protect other structures. And why was this bridge left essentially unprotected? If you look at some of the aerial images, you will see that the Francis Scott Key Bridge had only four small dolphins and they look to be relatively far away from the support structures of the bridge. Now, let's compare that to some other structures that we're probably all familiar with, some of which you might have sailed through. For instance, the Sunshine State Skyway up by Tampa here in Florida. A bridge that, well, the original bridge suffered a similar fate back in 80, and when it was reconstructed, it seems they took no chances. Very substantial dolphins, as well as artificial islands protecting the pier. I'm very confident that at some point, perhaps in the next couple of weeks, a person or a report is going to surface that had warned about this situation perhaps recently, perhaps, you know, 20 years ago, yet it was unacted upon. And those are the people that will be ultimately responsible for the tragedy. The people that chose to not protect the bridge in this highly trafficked area with something that is, well, very well known and widely used. So check out those videos. I hope you learned something. Regular programming will continue tomorrow.